Welcome to the Grizzled Geek and Review for May 18th, yeah. 2018. 8, 18, 18? 8, 18. It's 5, 18. Yeah, I'm on 5, 18. Someone misprinted this. Someone needs to, <laughs> we need to spell check Somebody this stuff. Somebody needs to be sacked. <laughs> Someone is excited about 8s. <laughs> uh, we're here with your weekly wrap-up of all your nerd news. Uh, if the geeks are talking about it, we're going to talk about We're going to geek about it here, too. Yeah. And so it's all Disney I gotta tell you, time. this is hard because normally me and Doug tend to geek about this stuff all week long, but now we've got to save it up <laughs> and wait to do it on camera for you guys at yeah. the end of the week. Yeah. Big news this week, Deadpool 2 opens up today. We went and saw it last night and it was amazing. Well, we're assuming it's amazing. <laughs> we're actually back in time. We actually <laughs> haven't seen it yet. But by the time you're watching this, we did and we loved it. So look for our review of uh, Deadpool 2 <laughs> 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 uh, coming out this weekend. Yes. Um, all right, so Deadpool 2, big opening. is estimated to be uh, 150 million plus opening. <laughs> it's this, oh, the this, this cynical nature of superhero movies at this point. You're like, 150, that's not that good for a superhero movie. Superhero movie gets amazing for an R-rated awesome movie. movie. Yes. I mean, come on. I was <laughs> yeah, looking to dethrone it's... Infinity War for the first time since it opened up as the number one movie. Uh, yeah. I, you know, it's still... And there, yeah, there's little chance that it won't. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, with 150 million opening, yeah. unless there's a massive resurgence of everyone going to see Infinity War or something. Well, especially since Deadpool is replacing Infinity War in IMAX now. Yes. So all the IMAX screens, probably all the IMAX screens will be shifting Most over of to them. Deadpool yeah. from Infinity War. Right. Um, but Infinity War still looks to be number two in the box office this weekend, so... It's and then it'll be number three next week. It, it, when just, Solo when comes Solo out. comes out, yeah. Just rolling with that money. Yeah. Uh, there's the big thing, all kinds of news coming out about it. All the the press tour for Deadpool 2 is underway, and it is crazy, as, as you would expect from a Deadpool movie. <laughs> yeah. Some of the things we're getting, uh, information we're getting about it is that there is, make sure you stick around for the post-credit scenes, kids. There is post-credit scenes, and apparently there was a ton more that got rejected, uh, <laughs> that they weren't able to do, and yeah. they were saying that one was too gruesome. <laughs> they could they they rejected, which involved time travel and a baby Hitler. <laughs> so, use your imaginations. What happens there? Uh, I think that's a famous paradox. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was also a lot of the post credit scenes were more interviews of superheroes for X Force. Have that, you seen the trailers? It's going to be on the Blu-ray. That'll be on the Blu-ray. <laughs> if you see the trailers, there is a ton of you know the interview process. So there's going right. to be more of those. And jokey ones coming up. One of note it had Chris Evans reprising his role as the Human Torch applying for X Force. That would have been hilarious. Yeah, that's. I'm good. like, oh, uh, that better be on the Blu-ray. Uh, I don't know, know if they filmed know. that or not, but it got. I mean, oh, that was man, one of the rejected great. ones. That would have been hilarious. But yeah, Deadpool too. I mean, there's tons. I mean, I can't wait to see it tonight. Yeah. Uh, super yeah, excited. It's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, in more super. News, super movie news. Super this money one, for super Disney money, moves. Yeah, <laughs> this one's about Star Wars Solo, which we just mentioned. Uh, mostly good reviews, but fairly mixed. But most are saying it's a good time. Yeah, uh, maybe not the best movie ever, but right. Rotten Tomatoes score of seventy three, and looking to open for one hundred and seventy plus million, which that's not too bad. Yeah, for, uh, for an okay movie. I mean, come on, that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, the Star Wars, the Han Solo movie, the name is going to carry this for a while, yeah. so that's good. Some of the reviews are saying, like, it's the nostalgia stuff is everything you wanted, right? You know, all the background stuff. And there's and a lot of people are surprisingly saying that Alden Ehrenreich was, who everyone assumed was the weak part of the movie, was, yeah. is, was not bad. Yeah, did, I mean, did, did more, the more previews I got, the more I was like, okay, this is going to be yeah. okay. He's, he's not bad. Yeah, the question arises, do we need every Star Wars movie to be amazing, right? Or is, it, or is a good movie fine for Star Wars, you know? Well, yeah, Especially yeah, when we're getting them one a year now, you know? Yes, yeah, because there is going to be some Star Wars fatigue, and mm -hmm. um, I mean... There's going to be good ones, and there's going to be bad ones. We had to sit through a Clone Wars. You know, at, at the end of, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, Revenge of the Sith, last we thought that was it. We thought that was the last one we were going to get, so we're kind of like, ah, oh, but looking back on it, Revenge of the Sith is not that bad a movie. Clone Wars is still bad. Clone <laughs> yeah. Wars is still bad. But Revenge of the Sith is not that bad a movie. But we kind of like, wow, that wasn't that didn't live up to the first three. Right. When you end on a low note like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. I just need good, fun movies. They don't have yeah. to be the epic end-all, be-all, greatest movie ever made kind of thing. Just yeah. have fun with it. Um, yeah. True. Yeah. 
But we also got some new details for Jean Favreau's um, Star Wars series that will be on the new one of Disney the, streaming service. One of the main reasons that streaming service is getting my money. Yeah, and <laughs> it's going to take place seven years after the Battle of Endor, filling in the gaps between the old series, you know, the, the original trilogy, and the new trilogy. And they're going to use cutting-edge technology, much like he used in the Jungle Book movie. Um, there's going to be some new characters, but, you know, my familiar faces will be on the sides. Uh, that makes you wonder if they're going to use technology to bring people like Princess Leia, or younger um, Luke Skywalker, de-aged Mark yeah, Hamill, de-aged Mark Hamill, or you know. uh, things like that into into the uh, episodes. Well, when they mentioned that the Jungle Book technology and stuff like that, you know, you got to assume mm-hmm. that's that's kind of what they're going with because they mentioned yeah. they're kind of coy about. So the final was kind of coy about the other heroes, like ah, the, the, it's like it's all gonna be new characters, but like if you're gonna see old character, old faces, like eh, we. You might see someone aside, you know. Yeah. So I'm sure there's gonna be cameos. Of well, and these. you've got to, you kind of have to acknowledge them to start things rolling. Yes. Uh, I would assume episode one is going to have those characters, and for you know, because if they follow the books at all, Princess Leia gets this whole ball ball rolling. Yeah. So hmm. I am hoping for Mara Jade in this time period. You know. That would be awesome. You know, it, there was no hint of it in the yeah. new trilogy, but that would be cool. But with the series, they don't have to mention it in the old series. You know, if yeah. at that point they could just include her in this, and we can just fill and in the blanks. Thrawn. And more Thrawn. Oh, Thrawn and Mara Jade. If they, yeah. ah, all right, okay. I gotta stop speculating. I'm getting excited about this. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, it's, it's too a, much. It's too a year much. off, so. <laughs> Although he has already filmed several episodes. Yeah, so. six episodes. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, uh, and just sticking with Disney and Marvel and all the money in the world, uh, what do you do after you have the greatest or the biggest superhero movie of all time? Arguably one of the greatest. You follow so, it up a year later with the with, with the, the next new big, biggest the new biggest thing. one, yes. But everyone's looking at Phase Four. What is Phase Four going to be? What is the future of Marvel movies? And we get a little bit of hint uh, now that we've actually got Infinity War out of the way. Uh, where Bob Iger came out and said they're working, Marvel's working on a new big franchise. You know, when he's telling his investors, like, what could that franchise be? And then Feige comes out and drops a bomb about Eternals, right? Now, what is Eternals? Horrible choice, Doug. I love the Eternals because I'm all for anything Jack Kirby, right? Yeah, here's the problem, is the Eternals are intimately tied to Thanos, Mm -hmm. and you've already done Thanos. Right. So True. what do you do with them now? Well, if you do like a series, if you make it back in the past, you know, which is when the Eternals took place back in the past, right? Well, I mean, the, you know, I guess it'd be just totally space, right? Yeah. They already dro- name dropped Thanos' dad, who was a prominent member of the Eternals. Did they, men- they, they named him? Red Skull, Red Skull dropped his name in the uh, oh, did. son um, of when he, when he recruited right. him. That's cool. Yeah, so, and they've already kind of been setting us up here. We got a glimpse of Celestials in Guardians of the Galaxy, one in action with the Power Stone. Yeah. The uh, the head of nowhere is the inside of a head of a Celestial. That's why I, was, I really wish they were doing a Nova Corps. That would have been that would be that awesome. Would be way better than the Eternals. But, yeah. You know. I don't know. I I I'm all for it, especially if they they use the sensibility that they did in Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. You know, or the Asgard stuff in Thor. You know, that's all. That's super Jack Kirby, so I'm all about Eternals. They have hired two writers now, um, Ryan and uh, Matthew Furpo. They're, you've never heard of them before. They're new up-and-coming writers, but they're, uh, they're paired from the fabled Blacklist. Okay. So Hollywood has a, in, a normally you think Blacklist, that's bad. Well, yeah, the, I think that's why they call it the Blacklist, is yeah. to turn that on its head. Turn it on its head, yeah. yeah. So if you're a writer in Hollywood and you have an amazing script, it doesn't get picked up anywhere, but it's super amazing, you get put on this short list of writers called The Blacklist. Mm-hmm. So they have a script on there that everyone in Hollywood agreed was amazing, but it never got picked up right. uh, for whatever reason. So these two are from there. Based on that script alone, they're the ones that got hired to write The Eternals. So we'll mm-hmm. see how that goes. Um, Kevin Feige also mentioned a little glimpse into what's coming out. Uh, Miss Marvel, uh, Camilla Khan from yeah. the comics, who is one of the awesome... Uh, non-pandering, I'd say, you know, yeah, it, new, it, new it characters. It was really organic how yeah. she came about. It wasn't just a, oh, let's take a classic character and turn him into a minority. R- right, exactly. It's, hey, we've got this cool character, and she organically grew, and everybody loved her, and yeah. she just kept she's, going. She's an awesome character, and I actually got to read some of her um, uh, first graphic novel. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, she's pretty cool. But she 
They say that they're doing something with her in development after Captain Marvel, hinting that there also could be uh, something about her in Captain Marvel. It could be introduced. Oh, maybe. Could be a series on. Because uh, yeah, don't uh, they have a connection? They have a connection. I don't remember what right. it is exactly, but yeah. Now she is a. Uh, it could be a part of the TV series. She is um, an Inhuman, so they have a tie yes, in with the, correct, the Inhuman, tie in yeah. with the Inhumans there. But I mean, obviously we're going to forget the TV Inhumans. But all <laughs> outside of them. Uh, Ages of Shield has Inhuman had Inhumans in it for a while right, there, yeah. and she'd be perfect for a new series on their streaming service coming out. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, I mean, that'd be cool. So, so far the rundown for um, Phase Four, we know these are the confirmed Phase Four: Spider-Man Two, un- right. untitled, Guardians Three, untitled, Black Panther Two, Eternals, and a Black Widow solo movie. So, those so far are confirmed. So that'll probably take us through twenty twenty. Uh, take us through twenty twenty. Um, there's room for one or two more on there in that phase, but we don't know what that's going to be. Is yeah. that a new Avengers movie, or we don't know what that's going to be? Yeah. So. Well, uh, presumably you're going to get another Doctor Strange someplace in there. Someplace in there, yeah. Um, get because they played him up in Infinity War quite a bit, so you know they're going to continue with him at right. some point. Um, what else? I, they're probably leaving room for Fox. Yeah, properties. True. If they if they get deal goes through, it's like leave some room in the slate to yeah. throw in a relaunched X Men or a relaunched Fantastic right. Four, especially if we're going cosmic. This isn't part of the sto- one of our stories, but speaking of the Fox deal, uh, Comcast does not have. They're not interested in the Marvel characters, right? They're mm-hmm. not a production company. They're a distribu- distribution company, right? Right. So here's the thing: if they don't produce these movies, even if they do end up getting the rights to them, the rights revert back to Marvel. Okay. Right. So if they don't have an active Fantastic Four movie in the works, the rights go back to Marvel. If mm-hmm. They don't have an active X Men movie in the works, and they're not a production company. Like I said, they're right. distribution. They're not interested in that. So I have a feeling one way or the other, whether this Fox deal goes through or not, these characters are coming back to Marvel. Yeah. So just a little there you go. heads up there. All right. So let's more. Let's do more Star Wars news because that's always fun. Disney. And this Disney. Is Disney. Exciting. <laughs> Looks as if Disney has Obi Wan movie slated after Episode Nine. That's amazing, which is great because yeah. that gets us you and McGregor back in the role. Um, yeah. I think he's actually this is perfect because the story that they're he's talking the right about, age. Yeah. He's the right age. You know, you go forward a little bit. Yep. Um, Stephen Daltrey of Billy Elliot and the Hours is reported to have signed on as director, and the pilot or the pilot um, the ru- the rumored plot is exactly what the Obi-Wan Kenobi book is, yeah. essentially. It's he's on Tatooine, having dropped Luke off, he's watching over him, and there's a brewing war between or conflict between sand people and local farmers. Local farmers, and he gets involved. It's a very western feel to the book. It's an yeah. amazing book. I loved it. It is a really great book. Um yeah, but that plot from TMZ comes just right out of that book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like it sounds like they're just we're doing the Obi-Wan book. Yeah. Which is great. I always say, if they're going to do an Obi Wan movie, that's the perfect plot to, to take right there. So, uh, I love the like, the Western sensibility of that yeah. story. Yeah. So. Oh, I think you one way or the other. Even if you don't go with that plot, you have to go with a Western of some sort. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, that is it for our major stories. Now onto our small or geek bites or nerd nuggets, if you will. Uh, I, no- <laughs> I won't. I won't. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zombieland Two. Out of nowhere, it'll be announced for next year nice. with the entire cast returning, the that's entire cool. original cast. So that'd be awesome. I love it Zombieland. A, it was a good movie. Ten years ago. That, that's also another making me feel old, <laughs> realizing that Zombieland came out ten years ago. Yeah. It was one of my favorite zombie movies ever. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. I think that and Shaun of the Dead are my two favorite <laughs> yeah. zombie movies comedy. ever. I don't, I don't care zombie about comedies. zombie movies, but zombie yeah. comedies, great. <laughs> All right, next year, the CW Arrowverse crossover introduces Batwoman uh, and the city of Gotham. Yeah. So we already got Bloodhaven. We've had Bruce Wayne mention. Now we're going full in with bringing a Batwoman character. Yep. Uh, So that's cool. Yeah. Officially, CW is the greatest DC movie universe. is the best DC (laughs) universe out there. Just freaking. Scrap they, everything in the movie universe except for Gal Gadot. Yeah. And just put the Arrowverse on TV. Yeah. We got I mean, on the movies. We'll have Wonder Woman on one side and then the CW universe on the other. Just, <laughs> just go with those two. Yeah, put, put all them on the movie screen. I think they could do it. That'd be awesome. I'd, I'd check that out. I love those, those shows. All right. Uh, in sad news, um, 
we get more Stanley news. Uh, if you remember, there was that report that came out, uh, the Hollywood Reporter came out about you know the alleged elder abuse and yeah. all that sad stuff going on. Uh, he's come out now. He's suing his former company, uh, Pow, for one billion dollars. That's mm-hmm. a crazy amount. Yeah. Uh, there was allegations including um, uh, them impersonating him. They're saying he got locked out of his like you know his social media accounts and they were posting as him and stuff uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, no word on whether fraudulently using his name, mm, fraudulently using his name, yeah. deals where he didn't agree to it, things right. like that. Yeah. There's also rumors of you know this being all perpetrated by you know his daughter and the, the people involved in that whole sto- that Hollywood Reporter story uh, you going mean on, perpetrating the suit, the suit, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Suit. So the the suit, we don't know what's going on in this here, but I mean it's just sad that you know this should be. You know, Stanley's, you know, his quiet time, man, his reflection time on his career and stuff like that. Yeah. And instead, he's embroiled in all this controversy and alleged elder abuse and stuff right. like that. And it's just, it's just sad. Whenever you're someone that there's that kind of money involved at the end of someone's life, yeah. this is when and he's in a vulnerable place after he lost his wife. So it's a sad story. Well, and you know, he's not in the best of health. Yeah. So no. yeah, he's apparently he can't see. He's got bad, bad vision, and he's saying that they, like, slipped stuff in for him to sign or either forged a signature yeah. or slipped stuff in when he wasn't in his right mind because he was grieving and couldn't see very well yeah. and just had him sign something that, without him knowing or agreeing to what, it, what he was signing. So Yeah, it's just a sad story all around. But, yeah. I mean, one, that, that, that amount, $1 billion, that is definitely someone looking for a settlement. You know? that would get probably. Yeah, I mean, that's not... Yeah. <laughs> All Let's right, see. Gotham prequel series in the works called Pennyworth. It's going to take place in the 60s, and it's going to show Alfred as an SIS operative working with Thomas Wayne. You know, as so, goofy as this sounds, it's better I'm, than Gotham. I'm more intrigued than Gotham. <laughs> yeah. Even with all the goofy proto Izzy ears, you're not Joker stuff they're doing right now. Yeah. I don't care. I just, sorry. I love Batman, but I just don't care. I don't want Batman without Batman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't care about the city he comes from. I yeah. care about Batman. Yeah. I may watch the next season if they do the whole jump ahead in time and he becomes Batman thing. Yeah. I might watch that. We'll Maybe. See. We'll see. All right. Uh, Daredevil, <laughs> speaking of superheroes on TV done right, uh, <laughs> Daredevil season three, we might see Bullseye. I see him make his debut there. Uh, there's rumors that uh, there was other bad guys involved and in some of the casting stuff. The biggest rumor coming out now is they're actually one of the people they cast is actually going to be Deadpool or Buzz Bullseye, Bullseye and yeah. in Daredevil. So we'll see what uh, if he's Bullseye or not. But that would be awesome. I mean, he's he's he bound to show up eventually. He's his greatest well, yeah. enemy. So yeah. he is is synonymous with Daredevil as Elektra is. Yes. So yeah, you got to have him eventually. Yep. All right, the Krypton series may change Superman lore. So, spoiler for that show if you're interested, which I'm not. It is revealed that Seg L is General Zod's father, making him Superman's uncle. Wow. General Zod, his greatest enemy, is actually an uncle. Trying to uh, elicit some kind of emotion out of there. All right, sticking with the bad TV, good TV, bad TV, good TV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's got renewed for a sixth season. So even though the second half of the season was titled The End, uh, you know, it's going to have a new season, although an abbreviated season. Okay. Right? It's only going to be half as many episodes. Got it. Um, but and there's a couple things. They are going to acknowledge the end of Infinity War. So if you haven't, spoilers if you haven't watched Infinity Wars, mm-hmm. uh, the whole dusting thing, we'll right. see. We'll see. Who in the team goes? Who, right, who yeah. goes? You know, who stays? What's going to happen there? Uh, I'm glad that actually, as much as the TV and the movies have been separating recently, I'm glad they're still acknowledging right. the stuff that happens. It's all it was established in the same universe. I'm glad they're keeping that. So that's yeah, uh, that'll be cool. I love Agent Shield. Although you see the images of uh, of Gravitron from uh, Agent Shield with no. the suit. Oh yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I'll show you after that. There's, there's okay. some cool stuff coming up for Agents of Shield. The second half, they went crazy this season. They just like, I guess they thought it was their last season, and it was like, whatever, throw Let's it all just, the wall. just do it. And it's been amazing. All right. So, a Doom Patrol series announced for the DC Universe. It's going to be a spinoff of Titans. Hopefully, uh, that doesn't follow the whole bad, good, bad, good. 
You're not a big uh, Doom Patrol fan. No, nah, I never really got into it. It's a Vertigo title, which is why it's getting a lot of people yeah. are getting up and, you know, woo, do, yo, Doom Patrol. It was really, it was a silly, it yeah. was a silly series until it got shifted into Vertigo. Then it became super serious and, you know, cutting edge or what, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, adult oriented, adult oriented. And all that kind of stuff. So then it got a fan following. But. I'm actually getting a little excited. I mean, I, I don't know if enough to get to pay for it, but this whole DC thing with the Swamp thing, if, if they can stick with the Vertigo series, right? I mean, Titans looks good, but if they, like, the Swamp thing was a Vertigo series, yeah. Doom Patrol Vertigo series, if they get a Constantine series on there, I might be, like, having to think about it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, ooh, I don't know. Yeah, you just named the two, two of the three you named are the only two good Vertigo series in my <laughs> mind. <laughs> I was never a Vertigo fan. No, I, I mean, well, I never got into Sandman or any of those. Um, yeah, I mean, I ever... Hellblazer, I guess, was okay. Constantine and, and Swamp Thing are the only two I read, in Vertigo, yeah. honestly, on a regular basis, so. All right. Uh, let's see here. Any note on sad note, um, Superman the movie actress Margot Kidder passed away at the age of 69 this week. Yep. Um, uh, she brought life... I did, I did not realize that she was homeless through the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, she had. Yeah. There were some issues. She, she had, had some start. real issues with bipolar disorder. That yeah, she battled and was an advocate for mental health later on in her life. Yeah, uh, but I mean, she was, she but you know, personality. I mean, a life for that that character. Mm -hmm. You know, who was up until then, even in the comics, kind of a secondary, you know, character. I mean, she wasn't a background character for Superman, right? Yeah. And it was after Superman the movie in the '80s where she actually came into her own in the comics. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, Margot. Brought, or she probably had a. You know, Margo Kidder. Kidder had a probably had a part in that. You know, it was the way she portrayed her. You know, yeah. so and she made that that romance between her and Superman believable on screen. So mm -hmm. you know, she'll be missed. Um, she's part of my childhood. You know, that was first. You know, one of the first Superman or superhero movies. Yeah. Out there, so and it was amazing. So and she was amazing in it. So she'll be missed. Um, well, guys, that does it for us this week for the nerd news. We'll be back again next week with everything. Plus, keep an eye out for our Deadpool 2 movie review this weekend. Mm -hmm. And if you want to help us out, be sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Uh, ring that bell so you get notifications when this stuff comes up. Yep. If you want to support the channel, you can do so a number of ways. Right. You can check out our Teespring store down below with cool merch like the Grizzly Geek t-shirts. We've also got a Amazon affiliate link. You click that link, anything you do, any shopping you do um, through Amazon will get a small kickback, won't cost you anything extra. Or you can become a Patreon supporter on patreon.com slash the Grizzled Geek. Nice. Thanks. Patreon supporter. Yes. Patron. <laughs> Patreon supporter. Pa pa yeah. However you want to say it. A little grizzler. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.